Hello everyone and welcome to another interesting game from the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Now in this game, uh, you know, it seems like nothing is really happening but then someone takes a couple of risks and in the end it pays off. Now, uh, Mikkel Tal has the white pieces in this game, he's playing the Icelandic Grandmaster Friedrich Olafsson and I couldn't find a photo of the two of them playing so here we can just uh, enjoy this photo of all the participants of the 1959 candidates. Now uh, someone asked in the comments last time I shown this photo uh, who are all of them you know in order. Now I, I don't uh, think the first two from the left are actually players because I can't make out who they are. The first one kind of does have Petrosian's nose but uh, he's I don't know I don't think that's actually Petrosian. Uh, the second person from the left uh, I don't, I don't know who that is. Uh, the third one is Tal, fourth is um, Gligoric, then we have Smyslov, then in the middle we have Paul Benko and Bobby Fischer, and all the way to the right we have Friedrich Olafsson and Paul Karras. Uh, but if any of you maybe have some better understanding of this photo, do share in the comments. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's see this game. Uh, like I said, Tal has the white pieces and the opening is pretty much the standard Rui Lopez Morphe's defense, so we're not gonna dwell too, too long on that. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop to b5, the Rui Lopez, uh, a6, we have Morphe's defense, uh, bishop to a4, knight f6, castles, bishop to e7, rook to e1, and b5. So bishop to b3, uh, we have castles and c3. And here d6. Uh, we have h3, uh, now knight to d7, we have d4 and the knight to b6. Uh, knight b to d2, e captures on d4, c captures on d4 and now d5. Uh, we have bishop to c2, uh, enforcing that e4 pawn and also creating some future threats towards the, the black king. Uh, bishop to e6 and now e5, locking the center. Queen to d7, we have knight to b3, knight to a4 and now bishop to g5. And this is uh, the first moment where uh, where Tal plays a move and Olafsson uh, has to really make a decision. Now, is, is Tal giving up the b2 pawn? What's the idea of knight captures on b2? Uh, well, if you play this knight captures on b2, you immediately get bishop captures on h7. Now, if you don't accept the bishop, you play king h8, then queen to e2, uh, you won your pawn back, you're threatening the knight. Uh, if the knight moves back, the light square bishop simply moves back. Uh, but again, if you capture it, then comes queen to b1, check, and after bishop to f5, blocking check, then simply queen captures on b2, uh, you win back your pawn, and you kind of messed up uh, black's king side, so all in all, it's perfectly fine for white. So, uh, while playing bishop to g5, Tal isn't actually blundering a pawn here. Uh, we have knight to b4 uh, by Olafsson, and now bishop captures on e7. Queen captures on e7, and now queen to b1, uh, pressuring that h7 pawn. And here, uh, you know, it's hard to say what's a good move, what's not a good move, but knight captures on c2 uh, should be an automatic. I mean, y you definitely want to get rid of this battery eyeing h7. Uh, but here Olafsson decides to first play h6. Uh, kind of stopping the idea of knight coming to g5. Also now bishop to h7 isn't much of a threat. And uh, it's probably since Tal kind of invited Olafsson to do it, probably that's why Olafsson didn't do it. So Tal plays rook to c1, as this is a backward c pawn, so always always nice to have your rook on c1. Uh, rook a to c8, and now uh, probably preparing to capture the bishop on, on the next move. Uh, here Tal played bishop to h7 check. And uh, I'm sure you're, you'll agree this is a weird looking move. What's the idea of bishop to h7? So king to h8, and here Tal plays knight to c5. And here you have, again, uh, a choice to make. Uh, do you try and trap the bishop with the g6 or if you don't do this, what do you do? Uh, what move would you play here as black? If you decide to go for something like knight captures on c5, which is like the immediate idea, uh, after rook captures on c5, that's a pretty nice rook on c5. And uh, if, if you still decide not to go for the, for the bishop, if you play something like bishop, uh, bishop to d7, uh, because here white is actually threatening a3 and winning this knight, so bishop to d7, guarding the c6 square, uh, but now bishop to f5, and after knight comes to c6, now you can simply capture, capture, and play queen to d3. Uh, white is preparing rook a to c1, doubling rooks on the c file. White has all the activity he wants here. Uh, so after this knight to c5 move, Olafsson doesn't really have a, a good follow-up. 
uh, and he indeed, indeed plays g6. And while this is the strongest move, uh, also I will have to quote Josh Waitzkin here, uh, it's a deadly dare to give a guy like Tal. Uh, so Tal, of course, as now the threat is king captures bishop, Tal plays bishop captures on g6, we have f capture, sorry, first knight captures on c5, getting rid of that, uh, of one more piece, as Tal is sacrificing a piece, so you want to get rid of as many pieces on the board as possible. Uh, rook captures, and now f captures on, on g6. Queen captures on g6, so Tal did grab two pawns for the piece, and he's uh, threatening to capture the h6 pawn. Unfortunately, you cannot defend the h6 pawn, so Tal will uh, grab that one as well. The queen cannot come to defend, as she has to keep an eye on the bishop on e6. So, rook to f7, uh, queen captures on h6, uh, grabbing a third, a third pawn for the piece. Uh, rook to h7, and now, uh, how do you continue your attack here as white? Uh, but that's the thing, you don't. Uh, Tal just uh, gave a, a piece for three pawns, so it's not really a sacrifice. Here Tal plays queen to f6 check, and uh, he offers a trade of queens. Uh, Olafsson accepts, queen captures, pawn captures, and uh, here we have knight to d3. If you look at this position, Olafsson now, okay, that rook on h7 is pretty active, the bishop on e6 is pretty nice, uh, the rook on c8 isn't really doing anything, and this knight on b4 isn't really helping much. So here, uh, knight to d3 was played, uh, kicking away the rook uh, from uh, c5, also uh, attacking the b2 pawn. Uh, Tal played rook to c6, attacking the a6 pawn and the bishop, and uh, this is the critical moment of the game, uh, where, where Olafsson could have uh, gained the upper hand on Tal, but uh, in the end he didn't. So you're playing this position, Tal just played rook to c6, you're playing the black pieces, you are Friedrich Olafsson, uh, try, and, try, try and find the best idea here for black. So, you know, I, I will give it a couple of seconds, as, I mean, this is a position you yourself will probably get a lot of times in your game, so it's, uh, you know, a, an interesting idea. So, for those of you who found the move, it's not really like you, uh, like solving the position, it's just crippling white just a little for, for his, uh, you know, root play. So, here Olafsson missed bishop captures on, on h3, uh, because now, well, uh, for one, uh, you, you grab the pawn back, and, uh, you know, and now Tal is still up two pawns, but uh, the, the F pawn is doubled, and without the H pawn, this isn't really uh, such a massive pawn storm. And now if you capture it, G captures on H3, uh, you get Rook captures uh, on H3. And now, after Knight E5, you're getting a Rook to G8 check, King moves, now Knight captures, Pawn captures Rook to H1, and after King moves, you capture the Rook on A1. And even with the two strong passed pawns, the two rooks will win this game as black. Of course, uh, after this bishop captures on h3, white doesn't have to capture the bishop. White will probably play knight to g5, attack your rook and the bishop. Uh, but only then you play bishop to d7, attacking white's rook. And after white captures on a6, uh, you attack the knight, knight moves, and now rook comes to g8. And uh, you've, uh, you've crippled white enough to, to play this game as black. Uh, but uh, after this rook to c6 move, uh, Olafsson went for bishop to d7 immediately. So here Tal played rook captures on a6, uh, now Olafsson brought his rook in, rook to g8, and we have h4 now by Tal. And now you can see the four pawns here, even with the double death pawn, uh, this is a much, much better structure, and when those pawns uh, uh, start marching forward, it will be a lot more dangerous than without the h pawn. Uh, here Olafsson played knight to f4 threatening that g2 pawn, uh, we have g3, and now knight to h3 check, king to g2, and now bishop to g4, still protecting the knight on h3, also pressuring the knight on f3, uh, we have knight to e5, attacking the bishop there, and now first knight to f4 check, and it's an interesting idea, uh, of course if you capture the knight, pawn captures, you get bishop to c8, you win the rook on a6, uh, so after this knight to f4, uh, we have king to h2 by Tal. And now another interesting move by Olafsson, he plays bishop to e6. Uh, it's again not, not a very powerful move, maybe bishop to c8 was a better idea, but of course uh, the idea is that uh, you can't capture the knight. If you capture it, rook captures on h4 is checkmate. Uh, so after this bishop to e6, Tal simply ignores it, plays rook to e1, and now uh, we have bishop back to f5 and uh, here you don't really i mean 
You could play something like bishop to c8, attacking white's rook on a6, and after the rook moves, you can bring the knight back to safety, for example, knight to e6. Uh, but still, this the, the threat of f7 is simply too great. Uh, so after this rook to e1 move, Olofsson tried bishop to f5, uh, but now Tal immediately, of course, pushed f7. And now you can see the problem, this rook can no longer stay on the g-file, if it moves anywhere along the g-file, then f8 promotes to a queen. Uh, so rook to f8 blocking, and now simply g captures on f4, as now there is no more checkmate with rook captures on h4. Uh, so rook captures on h4, we have king g3, now rook to h3 check. Uh, king to g2 only move uh, and now king to g7 uh, we have rook to e3 uh, offering to exchange rooks but of course rook to h5 now rook to g3 check king moves and after rook to g5 attacking the bishop and offering to trade another pair of rooks uh, here Olafsson resigned the game uh, because uh, if you move the rook of course you lose the bishop and if you decide to move the bishop uh, you lose the rook, uh, only thing you can really do is capture it, but then after f captures on g5, now the pawns have undoubled, there are no more triple pawns on the f file, and uh, now it's it's just a, just a winning position for white. Uh, after something like king to g7, king g3, you can see that black doesn't really have a useful move. Uh, white can, you know, if white doesn't even want to calculate anything, he can just push b3, a4 and create a pass pawn on the queen side. Uh, if black tries to activate in any way, for example, this rook has nowhere to go to become active. If you try something like rook to h8, you're immediately getting rook to f6, attacking the bishop. Bishop moves and now knight to d7, guarding the f8 square. There is no more stopping uh, f8 queen. You can block with the rook, but then you're going to lose the exchange and the game. Uh, bishop captures, so now you simply promote and you're up a whole rook, <clears throat> you know, there's there's no point in continuing this. Uh, so after rook to g5, uh, Olafsson resigned the game and, you know, it's, uh, it's a very nice uh, example of uh, just another game in this tournament where, where Tal kind of uh, tried something and it worked out uh, for him in the end. But uh, it's as Tal always said, you know, uh, fortune favors the strong. So, even though he didn't play the most precise moves, in the end, he was the stronger player and managed to prevail. So yeah, <clears throat> that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, you know, we don't want our vast knowledge of the 1959 Candidates Tournament to suffer. So here are the final standings. As you can see, Tal, who played in this game, won first place with 20 out of 28. And Olafsson won second place uh, with 10 out of 28 points. So, you know... Um, uh, a very nice tournament for for Tal and, uh, you know, not, not so great for Olofsson, but in, I mean, it, it was a pretty strong competition. So yeah, uh, like I said, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.